Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Bar Shimei Shai. Once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bar Shimei Shai, Bar Shemur Karkwadash. All praises and glories definitely do. So uh, I'm on my way to camp, so this will be a quick video. I was listening to this video here by um, the brother from England, uh, Raka Yaquam. Raka Yaquam. Um, and um, he did a video, Elder Rakai Yaquam, he did a video, Yahweh Shai's lawful father was never in question, which is true, all right? That, uh, that virgin birth nonsense, that didn't come about till uh, the, the Nisian uh, Council, which uh, I believe came on the scene around 324 AD. Okay, that's when it was being discussed that Mary was this... Uh, um, Basically, it's women worship. The virgin birth nonsense. When you when you look at the the uh, core of it, the core of the belief, it's just another example to worship the woman, as in Mary. All right. So, and it totally does not make any sense. Okay, that uh, that Mary could get pregnant without uh, the aid of a man. Okay, it's total nonsense. All right, and like I said, it's just another example to to uh, uh, worship the woman. Okay, uh, in the Nicene Council, three twenty four A.D., it, you know they had these discussions, these discussions, and they came away with Mary had to be divine, and that virgin birth nonsense, which the scriptures don't even teach that. You know, Yahweh himself had had put his his mother in her place. Okay, at, at the wedding in Cana of Galilee, uh, Yahweh Shai said to his mother, Woman, what have I got to do with you? My hour has not yet come. So even Yahweh Shai put, uh, put his mother in her place. Okay? Because she was, she, was, uh, uh, she was stepping out of, out, of, out of her order. Okay? Telling him when he should use the spiritual power. Okay? And Yahweh Shai had to put her in her place. So Yahweh Shai himself didn't worship his mother, okay? Like you simple-minded, uh, you simple-minded so-called Christians, you wacky-tacky Christians, you worship uh, Mary. Talking about some Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners and all that nonsense. Uh, another example that comes to me is uh, the scripture where it speaks about... Um, uh, when Yahweh Shai was talking and this woman interrupted him and said said to him, Blessed is the paps that you suck, as the breast that you suck, and the womb that bared you. And Yahweh Shai said, Yeah, rather blessed are them that hear and do the will of my father. So Yahweh Shai wasn't about his, wor his mother being worshipped. Okay? So that's simply not in the scriptures. All right? But... Listening to this brother's video, he's making some good points, okay? Um, so without further ado, I'm going to play a portion of the video and I'm going to, you know, react to it the way I see fit. So hopefully this video is edifying to you brothers and you sisters out there that believe in this 100% truth. So without further ado, let's get into it. Yeah, I was shy was going if joseph and mary were going around saying well yahweh shai is is joseph's not his father his father's god yeah <laughs> and yahweh shai himself that, was, and that sounds crazy i mean the he, the most high is our heavenly father our father in heaven but the, the balance is you have an earthly father you have a biological father all of us have a biological father the only one that comes to mind that didn't have a biological father and a biological mother was Melchizedek, the high priest, Melchizedek, okay? Um, he didn't have a father or a mother. He just materialized, all right? He didn't have no lineage, Melchizedek. But Yahweh Shai, our Lord, had a lineage, okay? The book of Matthew, the first chapter, goes into his lineage, the lineage of uh, Yahweh Shai's father, Okay? Right there, you see all the fathers mentioned. All the way back to uh, Joseph, which was the father, the biological father of Yahweh Shai. 
okay? That's why you have his lineage. I can't see how, well, I can see how certain people can't get it because the Heavenly Father have blinded them. But if you have any freaking common sense, after reading Matthew, the first chapter, and it gives you the list of Yahushua's biological line, how can you still believe that he didn't have a biological father? When his biological line, his father's biological line, is in Matthew, the first chapter, beginning at the first verse. And then when you go in the book of Luke, the third chapter, you read the genealogy of Yahushua's mother's father biological line. All right? The, the father of Yahushua's mother, his biological line is in Luke, the third chapter. Okay? So they covered both sides. Right? Anyway, let's move on. So that's a good point the brother just, just made there. And then also another point that could be brought in is the point of adultery. Okay, because Mary, we read the scriptures, Mary was promised to Joseph. So if Mary got pregnant, now think about this, if Mary got pregnant by any other force <laughs> but Joseph, that would have been adultery. Not to mention that would have been confusion. The, the scriptures speak about the Heavenly Father is not the author of confusion. It's you people that are confused that believe in that virgin birth crap. Okay? <laughs> but let's move on. Yeah. He would be basically making himself illegitimate. Yeah. Because there'd be no proof of his lineage. His son. Yeah. You know how you know how important proof of lineage was back then? That's how you were uh, rectified as a person, by what stock you came from. All right, so think about it. If it was known back then, oh, we don't know the stock of Yahweh Shai. <laughs> the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and she became pregnant. So his stock, his genealogy, we're not sure of. We don't know. You know how stupid that sounds? How could they rectify him as being a, a Hebrew Israelite if he had no lineage, he had no stock? <laughs> totally ridiculous, man. And the point the brother is about to make is uh, you couldn't enter the temple back then in the land of Jerusalem, right? The city of Jerusalem. You couldn't enter the temple if you were a heathen. He's about to go into that history. And that's what prompted me to do this video. So let's check it out. What would be saying is Joseph's not my father. Then who is your father? Exactly. You don't have one. Well, first and foremost, then you must be the child of adultery. Secondly, you could be a damn heathen. Hey, let me tell you something. It was it was very important back then for people to know who your father was because that determined what stock you came out of. All right? And it was very important for people to know what stock you came out of. That way they'd know what who they're dealing with. Oh, we know his family, particularly his father, he, he comes from a good stock. We can vouch for him. It ain't like now. You know, these women laying down willy-nilly, and especially the so-called black woman, and uh, the majority of these young Jakes out here, these Jake men, you don't even, they don't even know who their father is. It, it wasn't like back then, man. Did you have fatherless back then? Yes. But it wasn't, it, it wasn't like now. Now it's like no big deal. You know, these, these women, they lay down with all kind of men, and uh, you have all kind of paternity suits because the father's not really known. You know, you have a man raising up a child. He's not even sure if that's his father. You know, they they uh, they um, got that saying, uh, mama's baby, daddy's maybe. Nah, back then that was frowned upon, man. That was a totally different world back then. Okay, it was, you had to know who your father was. If, you, if, if, uh, if your father wasn't known, then you were called a bastard. A bastard. Okay? So... Let's move on. So you can't come in the temple because we don't know who your father is. Exactly. There's no acceptance of an adopted father. Exactly. Yahweh was able. Yahweh was able to go into the temple because they knew who his father was. It tells you that in the book of uh, Mark, whose mother and father we know. Oh, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. Whose father and mother we know. Right. So they knew, especially his townspeople, right? They knew who his father was and his mother. 
His 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 stock his was no was never in question. What like the brother said, Rakaya Quam, what was in question was was he the son, the only begotten son of the most high? Alright? That's what was in question. Not for the elect. The elect knew that he was the only begotten son of the Heavenly Father. They, they accepted it, beginning with his disciples, which became apostles. But the majority of Israelites didn't want to accept it. That's what was in question. Okay, back then it wasn't in question uh, did Yahweh had a biological father. Everybody knew from his town, everybody knew he had a biological father. They knew he was Joseph. Hell, they called him the carpenter's son. Is not this the carpenter's son? But you people with your virgin birth, man, you're just stupid, man. At this point, you're just stupid. You still believe in that crap? The virgin birth? Let's move on, man. Right. Now, let's go into the temple. The design of Jerusalem temple. The outermost area of the temple in Jerusalem was called the court of the Gentiles because it could be entered by all people. Right. So it didn't matter who you were, you could enter into the court of the Gentiles, all right? It was the most exterior and by far the largest of all the courts. And this even in the book of Revelation, it goes into that. The court, with, with, which is without the temple, leave out for it is measured, <coughs> for it is given unto the Gentiles. Okay? The other nations. They could enter the outer court. Now the temple itself, they could not enter into the temple. You're about to hear. Let's, let's move on. Area and by far the largest of all the courts. This location along Solomon's porch, which was covered, which was a covered area that existed on either side of the court's eastern entrance, was frequented by Jerusalem's sick and the poor seeking help. The Sareg at Jerusalem Temple was the fence that separated the court of the Gentiles from the rest of the Temple Mount complex. Gentiles, non-Israelites, and ritually unclean Israelites were forbidden on pain of death from passing through its gates to the interior areas. The punishment for a non-Israelite, someone whose lineage was not confirmed, entering into the court of the women or the court of Israel, beyond the court of the Gentiles was death. Do you understand this? <laughs> yeah? Do you, you? Like he's saying, do you understand that? That's how serious it was back then. So you're going to tell me that uh, your, your, your father that it wasn't a big deal back then if uh, no one didn't know who your father was no it was a big deal back then because that's how you were reckoned you were reckoned by your father that's how people know what stock you came from not like now okay where it's not a big deal oh uh, I don't really know who his father is you know people and that should be frowned upon big time okay because that shows just what quality of woman uh, that that woman really is that she's that she's loose that she's a whore. She doesn't even know. She done laid down so many men. She doesn't even know who the father of her of her uh, her progeny, her child is. <laughs> nah, back then that was a very serious matter, especially when dealing with the temple, because as you just heard, if you were heathen, you couldn't enter into the temple. So your fa your father, his 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 uh his line had to be reckoned. All right, rectified. Okay. Jerusalem was so zealous in keeping the purity of the majority of the temple area that they placed stones along the Soric fence, mm. written in Greek, which threatened death to any Gentile who <laughs> would dare enter. The Apostle Paul, when writing to converted Gentiles in Ephesus, referred to this fence when he stated the following. So if your lineage couldn't be proven, whether you was an Israelite or not, if your lineage couldn't be proven, you were considered a Gentile, you couldn't cross that border line on the pain of death. And how was your lineage proven? How was your lineage uh, rectified? By your father. Okay? By your father. You, these people want us to believe that who they call Jesus was in the temple <laughs> openly stating that Joseph wasn't his father literally madness. wasn't his father madness and then so therefore his father was unverified and that was cool <laughs> madness <laughs> these guys these people are crazy no they, they are crazy 
They're crazy, man. They're, they're, they're mad. All right? Now, after hearing all these facts, you're still going to believe in that virgin birth crap. Okay? Because really, at the end of the day, Yahweh Shimei Shai have blinded you. That's, that's all it is. Okay? He never denounced Joseph as his father. Joseph was his biological father. That's it. He was of the offspring of David. That's it. It's just that the Most High was his father because he was the chosen son of the Most High. Yeah, he was the first spirit created. That's why he had the title. He is the first spirit created because he's, he's still alive now. He's Even as I speak, he's at the right-hand side of the Father, as the scripture have tell us. That's why he, uh, he was the first spirit created. That's why he has the title, the only begotten son. All right, he was begotten of the Father. Remember, the Father had cast away the whole nation of Israel for their wickedness, as it is written. So the nation of Israel was begotten back to the Father, reconciled back to the Father through the first spirit created, which is Yahweh Shai. That's what that means, the only begotten son of the Heavenly Father. He was the first spirit brought back, reconciled back to the Heavenly Father because the Heavenly Father had cast us away, the nation of Israel, for being so wicked. Okay? So there had to be a reconcilement, and that's where Yahweh Shai stepped in. He was the first spirit, the first Israelite, as it were, to be reconciled back to the Father. In that prayer, he even said, when he prayed to the Father, he said, he said what was that, uh, John 17? This is more or less a commentary, because like I said, I'm on my way to camp. Um... John 17, um, John 17 is a statement that Yahweh Shai made. Yeah, here we go. John 17 and 1. These words spake Yahweh Shai and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, who is he talking to himself? Because you got these morons that believe that the son was the father, is the father. Yeah, okay. No, uh, uh, <laughs> I tell you, man, the ignorance is overwhelming. Uh, these words spake Yahweh Shai and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true power, and Yahweh Shai, whom thou hast sent. Uh, yeah, here it is right here, uh, the fifth verse. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. See? So, uh, when, when the Heavenly Father had cast away the nation of Israel, there had to be a reconcilement. And it began with who first? Yahweh Shai. There's a scripture where it says, uh, every man in his own order, Yahweh Shai first and then the first fruits. So Yahweh Shai was the first to be reconciled back to his father, as in, his, as in the heavenly father, which ultimately all of us Israelite men will be reconciled back to the heavenly father. Starting with Yahweh Shai and then working down to the, the rest of the elect. Okay? So pretty much that's the video. Hopefully you were edif edified by it. It was more or less a commentary. And I'll see you in the next one. Shalom for now.